Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fantasy Football Scout. My name is Tom and today we are going over some very exciting news in the world of FPL that has been announced today. And to do that, I'm joined by Sam. Sam, how are you doing? I'm really well, thank you, Tom. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very excited to talk about four big changes to the game that have been announced today. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, we've got, we've got news on chips, we've got news on point scoring, we've got news on the schedule... Um, and we've got news on transfers, uh, which is pretty exciting because I can't remember the last time there's been that many changes in a season. Um, but before we get into that, um, I've got to shout out the members offer, which is 40% off. You won't get it cheaper. The link is in the description. And now is the time to sign up because the price, re price reveals are almost done. Um, or they may be done um, by the time you're watching this. The game is coming very, very soon. So get get your house in order, get your season sorted and sign up for Fantasy Football Scout Premium. But we've done that, so let's get into it, Sam, into the first change, which is for me is the biggest change, and that is they've increased the number of transfers you can roll from two to five. Mm, I'm so here for this one. This is one I think that... A lot of established like FPL managers and particularly the content creators. This is something that we have, I know, I have wanted for a long time to be able to roll more transfers because there are points of the season where I look at my team and I go, I don't really want to change anything. And then there are other points of the season where I look at my team and go, oh my God, I could make like five transfers at this point. And quite often that comes on the back of having like, you know, felt like I've wasted some transfers a few weeks before. So Knowing that now, if I want to, I can roll five transfers and effectively have half a wild card to play. That's so important, isn't it? It's going to completely change your strategy throughout the whole season because suddenly it's not just thinking, well, if I don't make a transfer this week, I've got two for next week. It's like, well, actually, if I don't make one for the next few weeks, I've got multiple changes that I can make. And when we talk about, you know, the expensive players like Harlan, you know, we spent a lot of time the other day, didn't we, talking about how would you afford Harlan if you don't have him in in game week one? Well, maybe the answer is it doesn't really matter because you can use your five transfers, you can save them up and you can make those changes a bit later. So you won't be maybe so reliant on the wild card as you normally are. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I've got a few thoughts about this, but my first thought was that you can you can attack small blocks of fixtures a lot easier. Um, and load up on a specific team. You know, I'm thinking, obviously, I used to play the Sky game, and, you know, in, in that game, you, you can have circumstances where you get five, eight players from the same team and really target a block of fixtures. So I think in this one, you, you can treble up for a couple of weeks and then come out of it into another treble, treble up, you know. So I think that could be powerful. And as you say, on the premium side of things, um, you know, it, if, you, if you gamble against Haaland for a couple of weeks, it's, it's not a hit to get him back because you've, you've potentially got three or four transfers that you can use and shift funds around. So yeah, there's yeah a, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot I think it's really good. Same. Really good. I love it. Really interesting. And I also love the fact that using a chip doesn't destroy your strategy with your transfers. So, because it might be that, you know, during the course of saving these transfers to make something bigger happen that you want to play your free hit or you want to play a different chip and that's fine because you can then still have those transfers available to you when you come back from it so you play your free hit you've got three transfers available going into it but you'll still have those three free transfers coming out the other side of it and and i think that makes for a really interesting use of chip strategy because what we might start to see is players really thinking carefully about it because we know that for a lot of FPL managers, you your bench boost chip can become a bit of a... Well, it can either be a blocker or it can be something that managers see as a bit of a curse at some points during the season. So knowing that we can play a wild card and bench boost straight after it, but have banks and transfers before so that at the end of the bench boost, we don't have to keep that money on the bench. We can then deploy it straight back into the starting 11. That's so useful. And at the back end of last season, I could have really dealt with that because I had all this money sitting on the bench and I ended up with loads of bench points towards the back end of the season and maybe actually what I'd have liked to have done at that point is gone okay I'm going to take um all of the money that I've kind of had on my bench at that point and reinvest it back into the squad instead yeah and I suppose it will also let you sort of hedge your bets a little bit because you can you can be carrying three or four transfers weighing up a free hit 
um, and then if you don't make it, you've still got you've still got changes to your squad that you can do um, for free as well. And then just you know, finally, it's it really it extends the mini wild card because a mini wild card previously is two free transfers and a minus four, but you know now you can you can make six transfers off a minus four potentially, which is yeah, you know, it's exciting. More points, more players. Um, well, hopefully more points, not always, but. Yeah, um, yeah. I think there's lots to like about that. Um, for It'd sure. be interesting to see how many times players actually keep the five because I could see me getting to a point where I've got three or four and then think, actually, I've got impatient now and I want to make some changes because you can do quite a lot with three or four transfers. Um, but knowing you've got that flexibility to go up to five and if your team is looking really nice, which for some people it does, right? And you don't want to make, you know, sub goalie changes or change a 4.0 defender just for the sake of it. You no longer have to do that because you're not going to be burning that transfer quite so quickly. Yeah, that's very, very exciting. Um, so yeah, so just to sum that up, so you'll now be able to roll up to five transfers um, if you choose to save them every week. And if you play a chip, you will not lose these transfers. Uh, you'll come back the next week with um, the transfers that you had before playing it. So that's change one. So let's move on to change two. Change two. So Sam, you were speaking about chips just now and they have uh, quite mysteriously announced the mystery chip, which, <laughs> to be honest, we know very little about, but it sounds pretty exciting. Yeah, I can't ever remember a time where they've even gone anywhere like this. Normally, when you get a new chip announcement, it's like, right, here's a new chip. This is what it is. This is what it means. And this is how you'll be able to use it. This time around, it's like, oh, here's a mystery chip. We're not telling you what it is but it's going to be fun. And I'm so here for that because that's a part of the game that you just can't plan for yet. And I kind of love that. I kind of love the fact that there's going to be something that comes up that's going to throw it. A bit like the season when we had the Winter World Cup and you had that period of time where you could make those unlimited transfers. That was a whole unknown about the game and it made for such a fascinating season and it fundamentally changed how a lot of people myself included played the game so i'm looking at the mystery chip with the same level of kind of anticipation as i did that yeah i mean yeah it's 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 going to be really cool to see how everyone reacts you know there's going to be different strategies uh, and it's just going to be you know we're all going to have to deal with a shock a surprise a bit like during covid when we obviously got that second free hit as well um but yeah i mean obviously we know nothing no one knows anything um you know, there's. I'm sure lots of people will be thinking about Limitless, having played Euro Fantasy. Um, that's obviously mm. in the Champions League game as well. So that would be an interesting chip, you know, to play in a double game week and pile into Haaland, Saka, Foden, Palmer, etc. Um, do you have any sort of maybe bringing back an old chip or something? My favourite chip ever was the All Out Attack chip. I loved that chip so much. And I was so gutted when they got rid of it. For those of you that didn't play when All Out Attack was a thing, it just meant that you could play all eight of your attacking assets in one game week and you only had to play two at the back. And I loved that chip because you could just go all in with the attacking players and you'd pick a week where all eight of them had a good good uh, game week or particularly if they all had a double game week, um, then it would be a really interesting one that you could kind of play there. It was just such a brilliant chip, and I'd love for that to come back, particularly as in recent years, the front eight have often been really good. Like, we haven't had to burn slots in RA, and looking at the prices that we've had so far, I don't think you'll have to burn a slot in your front eight this time either, because we've got the likes of Jao Pedro in at five and a half. So unlikely that you're going to need a burner slot in the forward line. So for me... The all-out attack chip would be really interesting. I wonder if we might see some different things. Maybe the stuff that they've been doing with Challenge last season, maybe we might see some of those things come in. So you've mentioned Limitless there already. That potentially could be something that they do. Maybe there's something about the number of players per Premier League team that you can have for that week, because that would make for an interesting, interesting change. Um, yeah, I just... I'm so excited to find out what it is. I hope it's not too long in the season to wait. Yeah, maybe also double captain gets points. Uh, your vice captain gets double mm. points as well. Could be an issue. Yeah, one. that could be good. And I really like the challenge week where you got points for every shot that your players took. Like that would be a really interesting one as well. Like if you had, um, you were getting extra points for, for that kind of thing or maybe the assist count double that week or, or something like that. Like there's so many exciting things that it could be. 
it'll be interesting to see what it is they've decided it is going to be um let's move on to change three um this one is slightly more granular in the sense it's 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 sort of hidden deep in the scoring rules but um some niche changes uh including the points for a goalkeeper goal has gone from six to ten so if you're if you're lucky enough to get that once once Allison. in a season <laughs> yeah that once in a season begovic moment um <laughs> then you, that'll give you benefits uh and then there's some changes minor changes to the bonus point system as well yeah, and I think that the change in the bonus point system might actually change the way that we think about the game slightly, particularly for those really engaged managers. I think, you know, for people that are new to the game, understanding how the bonus point system works is quite complicated because there are so many metrics that feed into that. So many things that give you points and are positive for the bonus point system and then so many things that obviously lose you points, red cards, yellow cards, bad tackles, all that kind of stuff. Um so there are some minor tweaks, and I, and I think they are quite minor, but they actually could have quite a big impact in terms of who gets the bonus points at the back end of each of these games. So in the past, for example, one of the, like you've said, one of the big changes is going to be if, if a goalkeeper scores a goal, then they're going to get 10 points for that. Now, to be honest, if your goalkeeper scores a goal, the chances are you're going to get three points from the bonus points anyway, unless it's unless they've had an absolute nightmare the rest of the game and conceded five or something. But, uh, you know, that maybe makes less change. But the saving a penalty thing, I think, is quite interesting. So they've reduced the number of points that you get in the bonus point system for saving a penalty. It used to be that goalkeepers would get 15 points in the bonus points system for every penalty that they saved. That's going to decrease this year to nine. Now, in the past, we've seen multiple times and I, I remember it with Ariola this season not having a fantastic game but saves a penalty and then picked up all three bonus points as a result of that so I'm quite pleased about this one because I think you know the penalty save sometimes means that the bonus points don't quite go to the right person simply because it inflates that goalkeeper massively in in that scale so I'm quite pleased to see that one dropping yeah but they're also I, I agree with that as well because um, we sort of seen like three three draws. The keeper gets maximum bonus, and and it counts as a save as well, so it contributes to the save point. So they do yeah. they do get very heavily rewarded for um, saving penalties. So that's sort of a good balance redress, I think. And I think you know if they save a penalty and it's a nil nil draw, then the chances are they're going to pick up all three bonus points anyway. But like you say, if they save a penalty in a game where they've lost three one, they probably don't really deserve all three bonus points they deserve to be recognized in the bonus point system somewhere but they probably don't deserve all three and it has felt very much like saving a penalty automatically has meant three bonus points for the goalkeeper regardless of what's happened in the rest of the game of course it's not always like that but it has felt like that so i'm quite pleased about this one because i think it will give us a better reflection of the game in the bonus points in a match where a goalkeeper has saved a penalty um, so the other things that have changed then in the bonus point system uh, are goalkeepers and defenders who concede a goal will now be worth minus four points. So that's a bit of a change. And we've also have the added thing now where if a defender makes a goal line clearance, they will pick up an additional three points in the bonus point system. And that one... I love because we see that a lot and a lot of the time goal line clearances I feel like they're not recognized as much as they should be because they can be the difference between you know a team winning the game or losing a game we saw that in the Euros final right yeah. goal line clearance Unfortunately. you know made such a such a big difference to to England with the Gahey header uh, being cleared off the line and I think that that's a really important thing that gets recognized in the bonus point system so Although this might feel like a really minor change to the way the FPL works, all of these I think are brilliant and I think they're going to add some real value to how the bonus points are given out and probably mean that FPL managers complain a lot less about the bonus point system. Yeah, I, I like the goal line one. I think it might give centre-backs a little bit of an edge um, because obviously full-backs get points for crosses, they get points for uh, big chances created, key passes... So that gives sense because it does tend to be sense by itself because obviously they're in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, there's a couple there that you have mentioned, which is if you win a foul, you get one uh, baseline bonus point, which I think is good because you get you get one taken away if you f make a foul. So it seems only fair. And then I think this one is quite big that you'll get uh, baseline bonus points for a shot on target because one of the main complaints about the bonus point system is that it 
it punishes players for shooting because if they get a shot off target, they lose points. Uh, so we've seen Salah score once in a game and have a rubbish BPS score because he's taken six other shots that have gone over the bar. Um, so this one sort of equalises that out a bit. Uh, so I think it, it will reward players like Salah um, and Haaland who shoot a lot. Yeah. And, and again, I, you know, I think this is really important because the thing I see people complaining most about in FPL often is the bonus point stuff. And it's it's the fact that they feel like their player deserve bonus points and for whatever reason hasn't got them. And so I really like the fact that we are making some tweaks, which I think rectify the issues that people have. Like you say, when when players don't pick them up and they've had a good game, they've had multiple shots on target and they haven't been rewarded for that, this will fix that. It will fix the fact that, you know, defenders, centre backs can make a clearance off the line and be brilliant and probably pick up points for their team in the game and now get recognised for that in the bonus point system too. I just think that this will make a big difference and it feels small because it's not something that we're going to see every time we log in the app because we're just, it's not going to be shown in our teams or up there with a new chip in a, you know, in the mystery chip in a box that you can, you can, uh, you can play. This is something that you're not going to be able to see, but when we're playing the game, I think we'll find that the bonus point system is much fairer and much more accurate when it comes to giving bonus points to the right people. Yeah, definitely. And it shows that they, they're caring not just about the headline stuff, but also about the, the nitty gritty parts um, of FPL, which are important as well. Um, so yeah, we'll just uh, round that up. So the, the actual points changes, there's only one, and that is a goalkeeper scoring will go from six to 10 points. And then the baseline bonus uh, changes are that goalkeepers and defenders that concede a goal will be docked four points. Uh, a goal line clearance will be worth three baseline bonus points. A foul one will be worth one bonus point and a shot on target will be worth two bonus points. Right, let's get into the final change. So the final change is one that we have known about and uh, we've written about on Scout as well. And that is that there will be less blanks and doubles this year because of changes to the FA Cup. So the FA Cup up to the quarterfinal stage will have its own exclusive weekend uh, without Premier League football, which will reduce the number of blanks, which will then in turn reduce the amount of doubles. Um, so obviously the implication for this is is going to be on trips, chip strategy, isn't it? Absolutely, because you know when we think back to last season, we had weeks where we only had four matches as a result of what happened in the FA Cup. We won't have that this year. We won't have these absolutely decimated game weeks. And because of that, that will change the way that people use their chips. Because, you know, for me, traditionally, I look for a double game week or a blank game week in which to play my bench boost chip, in which to play my free hit chip, and in which to kind of target wild carding in and around so that I've got that ability to either come dead end my team into it and then wild card out or wild card into it so that I can then bench boost during it. And it will fundamentally change, I think, the way that people change the game. We're expecting a couple now of blanks and double game weeks during the course of the season. And realistically, this should be a lot smaller because we won't be seeing the amount of matches being cancelled. So maybe we might be seeing the odd double game week here or there for a couple of teams. So yes, we will still have the joy because it is always a joy of a double game week, but I don't think it will be the, you know, this huge double game week of, you know, eight additional midweek fixtures. And therefore what you might want to do is actually think about, do, can I play my bench boost somewhere else? Is it better to play it in game week one? Because I know I've got a full team that are going to play. Am I better to play it straight after I've wild carded my first wild card? after game week six or seven because I've got an understanding of how things are playing and then I can redistribute budget at that point. I think it will fundamentally change what people do, the fact that the FA Cup scheduling has changed quite dramatically. I agree. And I think this coupled with the change that you can roll five transfers now means, you know, there's potentially less need for a free hit for the blank game week because you can mm -hmm. take four transfers into it or there's... You know, there's less need to wildcard before a bench boost because you can change five players. You can change seven players for a minus eight, basically half your squad. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, as well as the the um, amount of transfers that you can roll changing, um, obviously, the, tri your, the chip strategy will change. And, uh, you know, I think the people that think about this get a plan early and potentially use some chips early, which 
a lot of managers won't do because it'll be different uh, and people don't like change too much but you know we'll be talking about it on scout we'll have all the strategy um, and potential game week one bench boosts which i suspect may be quite popular yeah i can see that being a popular strategy this year and i can't help but think that all of these changes would have been so great last season when we had the African Cup of Nations and the Asian Cup to contend with in January, had we had the ability to build up transfers, had we had the ability to not have these huge blanks and doubles and we could have manipulated the way we used our transfers, I think it would have been quite a different strategy that most people took going into that part of the season. So I'm so here for this. I think this, what we were talking about before with the changes that they're making with the five transfers, with the changes in the bonus point system, all of that is going to make a big difference. And of course, the mystery chip, that's all going to make a massive difference to our strategy. But actually, it's one of the changes that they're making to football generally and the FA Cup that might have the biggest impact of of all because all the things that we've always done as FPL managers now maybe aren't the right things to do and we're going to have to relearn that and quickly because the season's coming. Yeah. And there'll be no better place to get clued up on what these changes mean and how to react to them uh, than Fancy Football Scout, which, as we mentioned at the start, we're running 40% off in pre-season. So check out the link in the description below. Right, thank you very much, Sam. Very exciting news. Uh, It can't be long now until FPL launches, surely. Um, We'll have uh, potentially more content on the price reveals that have come out today as well. And... um, Yeah, we'll see you very soon for the next video. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Bye from me.